Hey everyone, it's Kay from Rad Reads, or you may know me as the Notion guy. So you've got your Notion spaces set up and you're an Excel wizard. You're about to do your first formula, but you realize no cells, no variables. What is this thing? In this tutorial, we are gonna show you the basics of Notion functions. We're gonna show you standard math operators. We're gonna show you how to use logic, like if statements, and we're gonna show you how to use date manipulations and text concatenation. So, Dig in, enjoy, and at the end of the video, we'll share the templates. Let's walk through basic math formulas in Notion using a simple calculator of uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I've listed the Fahrenheit uh, values. I add a column. It will be, this will be Celsius. I go into advanced formulas. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll grab my variable which is Fahrenheit. So you'll see prop Fahrenheit. And the formula is prop Fahrenheit. It's Fahrenheit minus 32 times five divided by nine. And you hit done and you notice it's command enter. And there you go. It, our, um, 32 degrees is zero Celsius, 100 is 37, and zero is 17.7. Here we're going to look at operators, which are um, formulas that do logic, equals, greater than, less than, not equal. In our first example, we have two columns of numbers, column one and column two, and we're going to test if they're equal. Again, uh, this is a formula type. I set it up before. You go into your formula and you grab your first variable, number, is number one equal to number two. Oh, you need two equal signs. And you hit command enter, we're done. And you'll see five equals five. So that's true, true is a check mark. And the other two are not equal. Now it's not as easy with text because you have to convert the text. Um, you have to use a formula that converts text out, out of text. Um, and what I mean by that is there's a specific formula for comparing two strings, which is uh, the formal name for text. So that formula is called equal. So I'm going to type in equal, and you'll see equal um, takes, uh, takes, two, um, takes two variables, uh, text one, text two close the parentheses and hit enter. Now, cat and dog obviously are different. Cat and cat with the different spelling are different, so it's false. Lowercase cat, lowercase cat is true. So that is how you use the equals formula for text or strings. Here's how to use a basic if, if statement to compare two numbers. In this case, number one and number two, and we wanna return uh, which one is bigger. So I've got my two columns set up. There are number types. I hit plus, I go into formula, take my title, which is greater, and then I edit formula. So I'll do an if statement. So the if statement will then uh, look at the first number. If number one, so prop number one, is greater than number two, then you will type in number one, else you'll type in number two. I hit command enter, and there you see. In both of these cases, number one is greater than number two, and then this last case, number two is greater than number one. This is one of the most used uh, if statement or cases, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of tagging uh, based off of uh, recurring events. So what we're gonna do here is convert weekly uh, into, um, into seven, monthly into 30 and quarterly into um, 90 uh, using formulas. So let's get started. Uh, we'll call this converted date. And this will be um, formula. And so the first way we do it is we use an if statement. So if, and remember the equal, 
if equal um, frequency comma weekly. Now remember, um, you need to match the caps. So if this these two are equal, then you want to return seven, or you want to return, let's say, zero for now. Okay, so that's the second part. Um, we're going to have to do nested if statements here. So, um, so now we'll do the same thing for monthly. And I'm just want to show you how I build this up. So then I go in here and I do another if statement, which says if equal frequency comma monthly, then you'll be 30, else you'll be zero, just to test it. So 7, 30, 0. Now then we'll take this last one, and we know that the last one by default is quarterly, so that's 90. Now keep in mind, you can you can create this formula once and reuse it over and over and over. Another common way to combine date math and uh, conditional logic is to test if things are overdue. So let's say that you have uh, these um, these two tasks. One is due on February 14th, one is due on February 5th, and you want to know which one is overdue, which, by the way, then acts as a powerful filter uh, mechanism. So what you can do is you add a formula. We're going to show you um, overdue. It's going to be a, a formula. Go in. And I'm going to introduce you to a concept called uh, now. So now is today's date. So I type in now and you'll see it puts in today's date. So what we'll do now is we'll test. We'll say if due date is after, so that would be greater than today. Um, actually, we don't even need the if statement. We can just say is, um, oops, sorry, is it less than today, then uh, it is overdue. So February 5th is less than February tw uh, 20th. So I'm sorry, today is February 10th, then it's overdue. So right there, you have a test. You don't even need an if statement. You're just saying, is the due date less than today's date? So February 5th is less than today's date, February 10th, which means that it is, uh, it is overdue. Here's a very powerful use case to test um, if you've crossed a review cycle. So let's say you have a list, a task, uh, a thing you want to read, uh, and, or a person you want to call, and you want to do it with a certain frequency. So you have your the date that you last did that thing. You last called this person on January 26th, on February 11th, or on August 6th. And you want to say, well, let me add, oh, it's a weekly test. So let me add seven days to it and test it against today to see if I'm overdue. So here's, how we, here's what we would do. We're going to use the date add formula. Um, and then we already have our converted date from before. So weekly is seven, monthly. And so we're going to add a formula and say um, overdue. And this will be a formula. And then we go in and we, so the first thing we want to do is we want to add 20, the, the date. We want to add seven to the date. So that's the date add formula. And as you'll see, it's you put in a date, which will be January 26th a number, which will be seven, and then text. The text are these different um, uh, type units, basically. And so we're going to use days. We're going to do date add, um, last review date, so January 26th. And then we want to add seven days to it, which is converted date. 
and then we want to tell it to add it as days, not months, not years. That's based on the formula specifications. Okay, so it added seven days to January 26th. Now today's February 12th. So if the date is less than February 12th, then we are overdue, right? It's been more than um, seven days, so we are overdue. So what I'm gonna do here is use an, uh, an if statement uh, that says, if this new date that we created, February 2nd, is less than now, then true, then we're overdue or else, I'm sorry, then false, or true. I might have gotten the sign wrong here. I got the sign wrong here. So true and false, right? So this new date is less than uh, today's date. So we are overdue. Hit done. And you'll see uh, if you add three months to August 6th, that makes um, uh, November 6th, and today's date is February. So this is also overdue. Again, a very powerful test to review in a CRM, a reading list, um, a certain behavior that you want to take. Here we're going to take a, a date, um, and we're going to look at how many days a task is overdue by, and take those number of days and create a piece of text, of descriptive text. And you can use this on your dashboards. You can use this to add some flair. It's probably a little bit more aesthetic, but it shows you how to use the concat function. So we have our due date for our two tasks. We're gonna go in and we are going to uh, do uh, days overdue. And it's gonna be a formula type. So the first thing we're going to do is um, just look at the number of days that's overdue, and that's going to be um, date between, as you see, date between returns a number. And again, that third column is going to be text. So date between, um, I always get a little tricky, confused with the signs. So today's February 20, uh, today's February 10th, date between, um, today uh, and due date, comma, and days. Okay. So now we have, um, so this, because it's February 12th, this one is seven days overdue, and this one is not overdue. So what we can do now is use an if statement, again, that says, um, combined date, it'll be a formula. And our formula will say, um, if days overdue is less than zero, then you're gonna say um, not overdue. And then if it is, you're gonna say over. Okay, so again, I build up the formulas just to make sure that they're working because they can get more complicated with the nesting. So now we wanna say seven days overdue. So we're gonna use the concat function over here, which would be uh, concat. So let's see what concat says. Con con concatenates to, we might have to turn it into a number. So let's say concat is overdue and overdue. Okay, let's see, let's try that again. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it in a helper function just to, um, oops, it's overdue. Let's do it in a helper function. It shows the dangers of, um, of doing this, uh, trying to do it all in one cell. So here we wanna say, create a new formula. 
formula that says um, that says concat. So concat takes two variables, but we also need format. So format takes a number and turns it into a string. So we're going to format days overdue, which gives us our, our number as a string. Okay. Then what we're going to do is concat that number, concat that number with another string, which is days overdue. There we go. So we can cat at that. Now I'm going to go back in and paste in this formula. This is where it gets a little tricky, but I'm going to paste it in here to basically replace it. There we go. And I can delete this since it, since I, it basically was my temporary staging ground. 